Hello and welcome to the ladies room. Today it's my great pleasure to have my friend Ellen Diaguardi, who is the president of the Sag Harbor Chamber of Commerce and the director of events for the Express News Group. That must be fun. It's all fun. Hey, well, <laughs> all thanks fun. for coming. To thanks the for having room. me. Oh my God. Now you have room to say whatever you would like to say. <laughs> you ask away. I'm happy to, <laughs> happy to talk about anything. Um, well, how, what brought you to Sag Harbor to begin with? Uh, what brought me to Sag Harbor to begin with? Well, it was about 40 years ago, and um, I came, I was going to film school in Manhattan at the time. Film school, yay. Mm -hmm. I was film major uh, at uh, the New School for Social Research, and I was driving in from where I lived in Stony Brook, and I got an uh, opportunity to get a job at a, managing a video store in Sag Harbor, who after two years... I remember that video store, right where Yummy Lish is Yes, now. exactly, so exactly, Telrad Video. And they were going to let me move in two years, move into the city and manage their one in the city and live in the that apartment above it, and I could go back to school. Um, so I took off from school, much to my, my mom's uh, dislike, and uh, came out here. And then after you just said what you said about the owner, so I won't say it. Nutty. But um, I, once that really sunk in for me, I quit. Um, but I'd fallen in love with Sag Harbor. Oh, yeah. And That's I didn't want to leave. Love. Oh, my God. And so I stayed. And here I am. Didn't Never finished my degree in film. 40 years later. Yeah, 40 years later. Why did you do all these years in between becoming president of the... <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, this is my second time on the chamber board. I was on the Sag Harbor... Uh, Chamber of Commerce board about 30 years ago okay. um, uh, when I worked at the Sag Harbor Express originally. I'm also on my second time with the Express. Um, so uh, I was on the board then. And um, I worked I worked at Southampton Hospital doing events. I was uh, with the South special events team at Southampton Hospital for a few years. I worked doing marketing for real estate companies for about 12 years. I've been around. A good marketing person. I've been around, Judy. What can I say? Been around. <laughs> yeah. Every time I meet somebody and they say, Ellen, hi, I have to think, um, you know, I where do I... You? Where, <laughs> <laughs> so much easier to try to think what job do I know them through. <laughs> but yeah, it's, 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 but it's been fun. It's been a great ride. So I'm, and I'm glad to be doing it. I sort of felt like it was my turn to take over as president of the chamber. So. Uh-huh. And... Um, so how do you split your time between the Sag Harbor Express and the Chamber of Commerce? Well, how does that work? I'm very fortunate that um, my boss, um, Gavin Manu, um, was president of the Chamber last year. Uh -huh. And um, he became president of the New York State Press Association. And that was going to be much busier for him. And that was when he turned around and said, what do you think if you know nobody else wants to do it type of thing? And um, I think that's kind of how chamber presidents are born. It's like, do, who will do it? Cause, who uh, will do it? Who will do it? It's a little thankless at times. It, yeah, um, it is. But um, so I said, sure, I think it's my yeah. turn to sort of take that on. And um, so he said, I understand that while you're at work, you'll be doing some chamber stuff. Yeah. So. You know, it's sort of, I have... So you can do your chamber stuff at the... At the Express at the, office, to a certain extent. I mean, like this weekend, I spent a bunch of time doing some work on our membership drive. It's time for everybody to renew their membership. So I spent a few hours working on that at home. And I do stuff at night and at home. But um, at work, I have one computer that has my chamber email on it mm -hmm. to one side. And then I have my computer that has all my Express News Group work. So I turn this way and I'm doing the chamber. I turn this way. I'm doing... That's Doing, funny. Yeah, so. So what fun events are you working on now? What's coming up at Sag Harbor? And uh, well, Sag Harbor, the chamber doesn't really have anything too big coming up until Father's Day, our arts and crafts fair, and sidewalk sale um, for Father's Day. We just finished Harbor Frost, yeah. um, which was great. That was huge. So for the chamber, there's a little bit of a lull. And really for us right now, it's all about our membership drive, getting new members, getting everybody to renew. Um, putting all that together. Um, we're also updating our website. So there's always work going on, um, but no particular events right now. Um, 
The Express is we're doing our first live since November Express um, sessions, which are um, panel discussions over lunch on a local topic that we do at different restaurants on the East oh, End. Oh, I, I used to go to those. Yeah. So now we've had two years of COVID, <laughs> so nobody's yeah. been doing anything. Yeah, nothing like being a live events uh, yeah. director and then COVID hits, and no. I didn't know I, I didn't know if I was ever going to be back working, but thankfully. Um, the Express News Group said, listen, will you do a bunch of other stuff <laughs> until a lot of the live events come back? And I said, yes, and let's do virtual events. So we did events via Zoom for- and What kind of events wow. did you do on, on Zoom? It, basically the same thing. We had a panel of people and then everybody was in you know, the audience, but they, you didn't see the audience. Kind of just, what subjects did you talk about on um, panels? Well, there's a lot of uh, affordable housing topic. Mm -hmm. um, we did, we did one that I really loved actually um, close to one of my passions, which is the arts and live music. We did one about, um, you know, basically what were musicians doing at, what, on the East End and, and, you know, local musicians when you can't perform. So yeah. we, did, we did that, which was, for me, was a lot of fun because I'm friends with a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, and what were it. they doing? Were they giving, uh, like, guitar lessons and live You know, really, uh, live concerts? It, was, it was really, a, they were all sort of um, just hanging on. You know, it wasn't like everybody kept saying, I know a lot of them were saying, you know, people say, oh, you're, you've got all this time, you're going to write songs, you're going to do stuff. And, and really, that wasn't, for most of the people that we had, um, wasn't really the the head that they were in it was sort of more I like think anyone was in a head like that we were all like thinking oh this will be a month or two or yeah, i don't know what we were thinking. i mean we had um we had nancy atlas on that and she did pull together a bunch of people to do um they filmed it safely at the stephen talk house with nobody else there uh -huh. um and the musicians were masked she did uh these um friday night hustle shows that they got people, you could buy tickets and they got some sponsors for. And That's the Express great. News Group, we, we were the media sponsor for that and I helped out on that. And the, that those were actually really a lot of fun. Um, but you're still sitting, my husband and I would sit in our living room with an on our big screen with a special speaker going and you know, dancing in our living room and <laughs> trying to feel like we were doing what we missed so much. You know? I wish I had one of those big screens. My friend has a giant screen she got hit by a car, so I've been visiting her fairly often, and uh, it blows me away. It's like being in a movie theater. It's well, great. ours is, I think, f 55 inches, Jeez. so it's not as big as... as I have a 37. It's as about some. this big. It's diagonal, right, how they measure Yeah. A friend oh, of ours has a 72-inch like one. Oh, my god. And goodness. my husband sort of keeps saying, well, and I'm, it wouldn't fit on the wall no, I, in our living room, frankly. That's my problem. It wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to get around it in my bedroom to to get to my desk yeah but uh, <coughs> so um we did we we did a lot of topics and we did we did a lot also a lot about covid you know we did sort of you know like coming out of covid or safety precautions for covid and um what was really fascinating to me was in the beginning um when we were new to doing the virtual events we'd have 120 people yeah because no one could go anywhere or could do anything and they were all into oh zoom and we'll go on and then after about a year of that, in particular after yeah, last yeah. summer where everyone sort of was, things were open somewhat again, it started falling off. And I have said over and over again that I would rather be in charge and running and checking a thousand people in under a tent in a field than do another Zoom event, frankly. <laughs> I, really, I just... The, you were Zoomed out. I zoomed out. <laughs> completely. <laughs> zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Completely I'm zoomed always out. like, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, <laughs> so I can... You can see the big print, right? <laughs> Not that I actually read this, but um, ha. Huh, so, so you're zoomed out. So, on your card, it has like Sag Harbor Express, Sag Harbor this, that, that. What, what is actually the Express News Group? It's all the free papers, right? The no, well, no. It, there, we're not. We're the only free paper we have is the East Hampton Press. Yeah. Um, the rest are subscription, or you can buy them at oh, the newsstands, but. So um, we're community newspapers, and the Sag Harbor Express was um, always a community newspaper in Sag Harbor since 1859. Um, and then there was the um, Southampton Press, mm -hmm. um, which has a Western and Eastern edition. And then the Southampton Press Company, the Press News Group, opened the East Hampton Press. So um, we were separate companies. And then um, fairly recently, before COVID, 
um, but you know, not too much before COVID. Uh, the um, people who own the Sago Express, my boss Gavin and, and his wife Catherine Manu, um, made a um, situation happen with uh, the very, uh, I think, forethinking owner of the Press News Group, um, Joe Lockheim, who said he wanted to step away, but he didn't want it to not be out of local, he wanted it to be in local hands. Uh -huh. So they got together, the three of them, and worked it out that um, basically they purchased um, the Press News Group and merged the companies. So we're now the Express News Group, um, and we are Sag Harbor Express, Southampton Press, Eastern and Western Editions, and the East Hampton Press. We're also 27East.com, which is you know, very popular website out here. Uh -huh. um, we have the Express Magazine. Um, and now, now we've got a podcast and a radio show and our events. And yes. yeah. When's the radio show? Um, the radio show, I'm not involved in at all. I want to say it's on Thursdays, I think. Joe Shaw, our wonderful executive editor, and a few of our other editorial people or deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, it's, it's frankly too, too much for me to keep up with everything yeah, that we're doing. Yeah, you've got a lot on your plate. Well, I've got this much on my plate. I don't know how the rest of them do it. The editorial team there, I, that they ever get to sleep just blows my mind. And Gavin and, and um, Catherine are, they're two of the best people you could ever want to work for. And they're incredibly hardworking and yet also full on family people. I'm, I'm sort of amazed. I don't have children. I don't know how anybody got through COVID with children, frankly. Yeah. It's just sort of, a, was a lot going on. How, how does the East Hampton Press stay f uh, free? Why is that one still free? Um, I'm not sure what the decision, I'm not sure what, yeah, well, advertising, yes. I'm not sure what the decision making behind that was. I mean, East Hampton obviously, you know, has the East Hampton Star, which is yeah. a subscription and a paid based paper. So maybe it was just a thought of, you know, we're not going to go do, you know, make people have another subscribed paper yeah. but it's very well read the east hampton press and um it's easy if you're at stop it shop it's just right there to yeah pick up. no i'm i'm really really proud of of working f for the team and you know with the team because um we're very fortunate on the east end frankly on the north fork and south fork and that includes the east hampton star and the other papers that are on the north fork we have some amazing journalism going on on the east end we're really fortunate and I don't know that people realize just what they're what's going on in the rest of the country in terms of community newspapers um, they're really important I mean it's boy that hedge fund that's buying up all those newspapers oh my god I guess in the star they I, I saw it on maybe 60 minutes I think 60 minutes last week did a thing on it. and then there was an article in the star about it um, I think in the guest words column. Yeah. Um, but they've bought up like 30, like the Chicago, Chicago Tribune and yeah. like big papers. And then they cut the staff by 70%. What's going on there? I mean, no, it's that scary. hedge fund, there's something really scary behind that well, and hedge real, fund. What I don't think people really realize, and they've, they've done studies, that when you have a community newspaper really doing their job in your community, taxes stay lower. Boards, uh, government boards are held more accountable. People are more involved. People are more involved. It's, there's just so much more to it. I can't even speak as eloquently as I wish I could to how important it is. Yeah, um, really I'm important. just thrilled to be doing, doing the events, which um, I ran into uh, Gavin at a New York Press Association um, convention. I was working for actually the press news group at the time. And um, I know his mom, Gavin's mom, was friendly with my mom, and she said, "Why aren't you working for my Your son?" Mom local? Are you local to begin with? No, I'm not. Um, Where my, are you from? Um, I'm from Stony Brook. Oh. Um, but I moved out here, like we said, 40 years ago. My mom lived out here before I did. She sadly she passed away um, about 15 years ago, uh -huh. but she was um, an East Hampton uh, realtor for uh, many, many oh, years. What was your mom's here. name? Dorothy Crystal. Oh, I know that. Oh, worked, I, I knew Dorothy Crystal. She worked for Alan Schneider. Alan Schneider. She worked for Cook Pony East Farm. Ham, East Hampton. Uh, Ham, I was in the... You were in mortgages, you said. Oh, no, I did real estate first. When oh, you my did? My daughter okay. started uh, kindergarten. I started real estate. Oh, okay. And I was with Brover, Broverman Nubo Brennan. was brand new then. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and Paul Brennan, well, Tina Fred was, was my first real estate agent in okay. 19, 1969. Um, and then Paul Brennan the next year. He was... Alan Schneider's boy. He was mm -hmm. young. Yep. 
Yep. And um, so um, when I started, the, he that was brand new. Bravo been new, Bo Brendan. So right. he was like, "Come to me." Frank Newman. And I did. Yeah. And then um, and then it got a little tricky. <coughs> so I went to Alan Schneider. Yeah, I'll okay. leave out the store sorted details. <laughs> I went to Alan Schneider. There's always sorted details in oh, real estate, real estate, Judy. Oh, There's oh always sorted the details. Real, it's amazing. Real estate agents, when they get together, those stories. I know. Ay, ay, ay. I know. Um, and uh, it's a shark pool. They'd sell their mother for a deal, really, any other. Oh, them. I think there's a few of them that there's would. Yeah, there's I definitely. Was in <laughs> um, so was my mom. Yeah, I was called, she, yeah, the, she the, was. I was called to the Girl Scout of real estate agents. Yeah, yeah, she, like she's like a little angel. Yeah. Um, but uh, I left Robin Brennan and went to Alan Schneider, okay. which was a great company. Yeah. And Alan was so generous. Yeah. And the office meetings were great. We had bagels and cream cheese, and right. we, you know, it was just great. And uh, Christmas parties at the Maidstone Club on mm -hmm. the ocean and yep. presents from Tiffany. It was yep. just fabulous. Yep. So then I had a lucky streak and I said, I sold five houses. I sold a house every month for five months. And I thought, wow, I'm at the top of my game. I should go to Sotheby's. Uh, okay. And I left Schneider and I went to Sotheby's and it was the worst decision yeah. I've ever made because they were so un together and it was not a generous company. Yeah, I think everybody, I mean, and they've all changed. I, because I worked within, I started working at Cook Pony Farm as a receptionist because uh -huh. um, my mom was When it there. was on the little triangle? No, no. after that, when they okay. were right next to the movie the theater, you know, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right there. Um, and uh, my mom was working there and I started, uh, when I decided I wasn't going to go back to school, I needed to get a job. Yeah. And my mom got me a job as the weekend receptionist there. And um, I, so I started there and then I left and did worked at the Express, did some other stuff, then I the hospital, and then I came back to Cook Pony Farm when they had expanded to seven offices as their marketing and advertising director. Uh -huh. And I did that right up until Corcoran bought them. Uh -huh. And then I was with about a year with Corcoran, but Corcoran really had people in the city that were kind of doing more of my job, and it wasn't really needed. And then I um, ended up helping Judy Desiderio open town and country. Nice, and yeah. I worked for Judy for two years um, until I got um, sort of wooed away by Dan's papers, which I then did for ten years wow. um, there. So, like what I did said, you do I've been around. Dan's just to um, sell I, I started, or events? No, I started out as um, assistant to the publisher, uh -huh. and then I kind of segued into their director of events. Events, yeah, because that was sort that of must what. Must be a fun job organizing events. I think it's fun. There's, I would think it's fun. You have to have a very certain type of personality, yeah. for, to, in my mind, to make it work. Because you have to be Coordinate very, very detailed people. on one side, uh -huh. but also willing to just roll with the punches on the other side and just kind of work, like take it on as it comes. Because yeah. everything changes. I mean, particularly if you're in a field under a tent and there's 1,300 people that you're checking in and yeah. you've got a million things going on, you can't be, well, we're going to do it this way. You know, you have to be able to say that's not working and be able to think what will work. Yeah. And for me, that's just something that, um, Exciting. and it's a huge adrenaline rush. I think yeah. I'm an adrenaline junkie. I absolutely think I'm completely an adrenaline junkie because you're constantly in this heightened sense of looking at everything going on. Um, so the events with the Express are smaller than a lot of the events that I've done, and they're much more um, topic-based. Uh -huh. But I also love that they seem to have an effect. They seem to help bring things around, get people in a room talking together. Um, and the community has really embraced them, so that's been that's Very been a cool. wonderful thing. Very cool. Yeah. So, what kind of new stuff are you going to bring to the Chamber of Commerce? How are you going to change it? Um, I don't know how much I'm going to change it. Um, I, I think I'd like to keep it as healthy as it is right now. A lot of chambers are having a hard time, um, but with Gavin as president, we came back from COVID where. There was only about a third of our membership had renewed um, to full back to like where we'd been pre-COVID. Yeah. Um, I'd like to think that I'm going to keep keep that up. Maybe add there's a bunch of new stores in Sag Harbor. I mean, you walk on yeah. Washington Street and like everything's new. Yeah. Um, so I have to hit the street and, and talk to some people and try to get some new members. On and the um, I mean, there's a lot of talk about you know, chambers traditionally, their job has been to bring business in. And for Sag Harbor, it was always, even 30 years ago, bring business in on the shoulder seasons because, the, as we all know, the season is the season. Um, that's, but 
the yeah. season is now. Yeah, now they're February, almost February is completely <laughs> dead. But all the people that came out for COVID, yeah, are not leaving. There's almost no shoulder <laughs> seasons in a way. But if you talk to the businesses, they still say like February, yeah, March, we we, February, we could March. like to be busier. And even you know October, November it could Forget be a little about busier. February. Close for February. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, had be. we had Harbor Frost in February, and it was great. Everybody oh, was. Um, so I, I think, you know, keeping, keeping things going. And, um, and also, I'd like to, because it got so shut down for COVID, is I want to start bringing the full membership into the meetings again mm -hmm. and having meetings where we're, where we're all together in a room. And it's not Zoom meetings with just the board. I mean, we have a great board. They're all wonderful. Um, but it, it gets a little stagnant, and I want to start bringing... Yeah. The full membership, if you're a member of the Chamber of Commerce, your voice should be heard and you should be at the meetings. And so that's kind of one of my goals is to do that. And we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see if hopefully maybe somebody will come in with a great idea for another event. I'm always open to events. I walk into places like, like the cinema, yeah. like the Sag Harbor Cinema and think, I want to do an event here. I love I walk Sag into the Harbor church cinema. and think, I want to do an event here. The you church know? is doing great Yeah, yeah they don't need They're me. Doing, They're doing enough events. They're but, amazing. It's but really, I, that's how my so head wonderful. works. Yeah. I see a location, and I immediately, yeah. and, and, and Gavin laughs at me. We will walk through a place, and he'll say, you're thinking you want to do an event here, aren't you? And I, that's just sort of where I go. And we love our, our the green room on the top of the Sag Harbor I, Cinema. I love we the love green room more. I do. And Deborah, the bartender. She's great. From Ireland. She's well, what a, you, she's a firecracker. I mean, what are you going to see? You've got somebody who's smart, fun, interesting, and she's Irish. Like, yeah. how can you go wrong as a bartender? And she's a great know? bartender. <laughs> she's on top of everything. Yeah. And when it's good weather, that deck outside, you have really a 270-degree view. It's, it's you just amazing. can't see Main Street, but yeah. you could see everything else. Well, one of the things I, I, I make people crazy about, because my, my, my poor husband's heard this so many times sitting at the bar, is that was my original view of Sag Harbor, because my first apartment was over what is now LT Burger, and at the oh, Times okay. was J.W. Ryerson's. And oh, my, yeah, apartment, Ryerson's my apartment so had nice. that view. Yeah. So the first time I... I took the cinema tour before they opened four times. Oh, I didn't take it four times. Four times. <laughs> That's how crazy I am. And the first uh. time I walked up there, April Gornick was actually giving the tour, and there was like three other people with us, I think. And we went up there, and I just looked, and I saw that view. And it made me yeah, feel like I was 21 again. I know, <laughs> threw you back. And so, I, I yeah, I, I love I think that. you still feel like you're 21 all the time, <laughs> I, Ellen. There's parts of me that too. I there's... feel like I'm 22, so, and I am older than you, so. There's parts of me that feel like I'm 91. So. <laughs> I'm not but. going there. <laughs> but no, I do, I, I, I love that. It's, I think it's a great, I mean, Sac Harbor is really, um, we're, we're so fortunate. It's just it's an amazing. It's a real town. It's amazing. It's, it's an amazing village. The last real town. I mean, I, you know, the American Hotel, Page, yeah. Lulu, K Pasta, San. I mean, I can't, I, I can't go to all the places Page I want to go to. Did a great job through COVID. They did a great job. So did Sen. Sen, you couldn't even yeah, get the, through the phone with Sen sometimes. Sen was great. Yep. No, yep. but but and um, Tito was great. Yeah, yeah. No, everybody. I think um, Sag Harbor really. Um, everybody, the merchants, uh, jumped to. I mean, I would buy. I was buying. Presents the wharf shop. They would email me pictures. Okay, we have this, this, and this. My goddaughter's, um, uh, you know, it was her. It was Christmas the, that Christmas, Gwen. and and um, yeah, Gwen was emailing me yeah. pictures of this, and then go to the back. I paid with my credit card over the phone with her. Went to the back door. There was a bag with the it's present at the back door. Amazing how everybody had to adjust to doing everything yeah. online. It was and Sag Harbor Liquor Store was making deliveries to my house, so it all worked out really. And, and now the governor's going to let people get to go alcohol. That's going to be interesting. Oh, that's, that's going to be really. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. Can you imagine all those kids standing out in front of Page at night that are all vaping yeah. with a drink in their hand. Yeah. Oh, we'll see where that goes. I don't well, know. Sag Harbor has become like Disneyland in the summer, which makes me very sad, really. Yeah, there's certainly down parts like, to it. Like it's Montauk's like for the younger kids, the older ones and, and older people are like, it's a promenade for them now, yeah. Sag Harbor. So. Well, you know, change, 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 is in, change is inevitable. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, I, I remember, uh, you know, right after Labor Day, there was a dog in Sag Harbor. His name is McDuff, and he would sleep in the middle of Main Street at, by like by the like second week in September, and there was no problem. And I can't imagine I you, if you stand in the middle of Main Street now in September, your car is going back and forth. So yeah, do I you mean, remember when the American Hotel like 
the dining room on the side was just bare wood floors and, and, and he had picnic tables in there. I don't. I think I was I think I was shortly after that was shortly First before time I, I ever arrived. ate shark. Uh. Oh, and I didn't know it was shark. And then I found out it was shark and I was like, What? Well, when I, cause when I first lived on Main Street, I was in my 20s, and I yeah. wasn't making a lot of money. And the American hotel has always been a little bit more of a pricier place. Yeah. But my best friend, Cynthia, and I used to, um, we would get some drinks at Ryerson's. We'd have a few drinks. And then we would take her uh, backgammon board, and we would go across, I'm sorry, her cribbage board, and we'd go across the street to the hotel, set it up on their backgammon board, and we'd sit there and play cribbage. And have one drink. And, freak, and, and I, we'd get one drink and sip it. Michael and, and, and I would sip. One yep. martini and yep. play backgammon. For and like I was two fortunate; hours. she's a gorgeous blonde. So frequently, we would get drinks bought for us too. All right. so that worked out really well. Like the way you think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the good old days. No, I well, and you I did like have I the said, best of it back then. Didn't I, you? Like I said, well, and I still, my first friend in Sag Harbor used to talk about good skates all the time. Judy, oh, and good how, skates! Oh. How she she grew up going to good skates. She's a local girl, so yeah, a you've lot got of you've people. got even more history in Sag Harbor. We do that. have a lot of history in Sag Harbor. Uh, my first bank was that chase on the corner. It was chemical. When your needs, when a woman's needs are financial, her answer is chemical. And then it went to uh, North Fork and then South Fork and, yeah. and then I, Capital I was, One and now Chase. I was a Sag Harbor Savings Bank person from day one, and then and then it switched to Apple. And I haven't I haven't left. I I, I literally blows my mind when I think how long I've been banking there. The way I can tell how long I've lived in Sag Harbor is if I look at my first you know banking experience. And the fact that I had a check cashing card with the Sag Harbor liquor store that Bob Schmitz wrote the date on it, and I could go in there with my work, my check from my job at the Express, and he would cash my check. I used for to do me. that at McNamara's. We're out of time, my darling. We could talk and talk and talk for hours. And ending with my cash check cashing you story. You must come back. Yes, <laughs> you must come back. I would love to. Thank you for joining the ladies' room. Thank you, Ellen, for coming. And remember, ladies, leave yourself lots of room. Give yourself lots of room for love, for fun, to grow. And to glow, you're glowing. That's you're a happy girl in your in your Sag Harbor <laughs> seat. See you next week. Thank you. Stop.